Hello everyone, I'm Jennifer Voixner. I'm the scientific co-founder and chief scientific officer of Immunogenics. And I'm also a diagnosed celiac patient. And I wanted to say a big thanks to CDF for inviting me to participate in this great event. Um, I really hope you all enjoy this session and come away with some valuable information and motivation. Um, as a CD patient myself, and even as a drug developer, I'm well aware and I know exactly how it feels to wonder, is there ever going to be a drug? Is there ever going to be a therapy approved? And, why, and if yes, why is it taking so long? Well, this, that, that's what this session is all about. We'd like to give you all an update on celiac disease drug development. And at the end of the session, you'll be able to ask the speakers yourself a question. And so while you're listening, please, uh, please do plan to ask a question. Um, so as you'll see in the first presentation, there are many aspects of the celiac disease immune mechanism that warrant study. And so thankfully nowadays, there are many drug developers in the space who are in various stages of developing therapies, drugs, tools, and so on to manage the disease. Immunogenics is, is thankfully one in the space and we're developing latagglutinase which is an orally administered therapy that breaks down gluten in the stomach. We're also developing a series of diagnostic tools uh, for the management of CD post-diagnosis. Um, another thing we're developing is an electronic patient reported outcome tool called the Celiac Disease Symptom Diary. And this records symptoms to assess the well-being of patients while they're on their diet. Um, we've just finished one phase two the clinical study we're recruiting for another now and we'll be recruiting for a third in about one month's time unfortunately for everybody COVID has put a wrench in everybody's clinical trial plans but we're we're all hopefully managing to circumvent that and move forward so before we get started um i talked to a, a, some colleagues and i wanted to share some of their insightful comments about the drug um, discovery process, drug development process. One colleague describes drug development as a research ecosystem. And if you think about that, you, you can imagine it's comprised of many participants and each with a, with a vital role. And if they don't all collaborate with each other, the system will fail. And another academic colleague said, it's not just Big Pharma and the FDA. Academic collaboration with a drug developing sponsor, whether they be big or small, is a key component of bringing new treatments to people with celiac disease. He shared, at our center, we have the patients, we have an active research program, but we do not develop the medicine. We need innovative developers to invest in CD and to work with us to, to execute the proper trials. But how do you do these types of academic collaborations? How, how does it all come, how does it all fit together? Well, here in the US, the backbone of R&D that enables advances in diseases like CD is government funding, specifically NIH. And we are extremely lucky that this funding exists. Basically two research programs that NIH supports via grants are basic science programs, which fund directly to the academic researchers and translational research programs that work as a collaboration with a small business like immunogenics and an academic center. Both of these programs are rigorously peer reviewed and follow time honored processes for selecting the best ideas. One of my research colleagues said, these NIH programs are the envy of other countries across the world. We should do more to support it. Patient support groups like CDF can, can and should do a lot to educate patients as well as legislators at all levels about the value of supporting the NIH funding initiative. But there's one critical detail that I need to share. And that is currently government funding for CD research is the lowest of all the GI diseases. That's a key takeaway that we should all remember. This is something we have to change and something definitely worth advocating for. 
but there's also other sources outside of government funding. And ultimately, we need all of it, especially once the clinical program reaches the later stages. Um, these, these large clinical trials are incredibly expensive to conduct. So there's private investment, angel investment, funding from foundations such as CDF, Gates, AGA, et cetera. Then there's investment from venture capital, industry, and of course the government funding, which I've just highlighted. I was asked to briefly share our, our experience with funding because we are somewhat unique with respect to government funding. So as Immunogenics started, we started with personal investment, then secured support from private and angel investment. But the really big deal for us was securing government funding via NIH. Given that research is the lowest funded GI disease for celiac disease, we we're extremely proud to have been granted three large NIH small business innovation grants. As I said, we've just we just completed an NCCIH funded study at the Mayo Clinic. Our NIAID funded Celiac Shield study is enrolling now, uses two academic centers of excellence, Mayo Clinic and Columbia CD Center, as well as two private practice sites. Our NIDDK funded study, which doesn't have a name as of yet, will enroll soon, within a month or two, and we will be working with Stanford University's Type 1 Diabetes Center to study both CD and T, T1D patients. This NIH funding has offered us amazing opportunities as a small sponsor to utilize the expertise of these key opinion leaders and clinicians at the Centers of Excellence, and we would never have been able to do this on our own funding. Lastly, before we move forward with the session, I wanted to highlight you, the patients, your families. You may not realize the extremely important role you all play in the CD research ecosystem. Each one of you is gold. Why? For two reasons. First, you're essential for our clinical trial success. No program can move forward without successful trial data at each step. Without that, there endeth the chance for more funding to continue the program. I think I can speak for all drug developers when I say how grateful we are um, for each one of you. And we, we do appreciate the awkward and uncomfortable things that we ask you to endure in our clinical studies, so thank you. Um, second, you're essential as advocates for government funding. Please consider being part of CDF's program and you can learn how to approach your legislators to advocate for more research funding for us. So with that, I'll thank you for your um, attention. I know you'll enjoy our next three speakers, and I really encourage you to please ask a question in the Q&A session, because this is your event, and this is your chance to learn, so don't be shy. Enjoy.